Hello, hello. Quick mic check. Hello, hello, hello. Whoops, sorry guys. I just have this quick little uh, mic. I want to make sure it's on. <laughs> just got it a couple days ago. Hello? Awesome. Cool. All right. Um, all right. Now we can get started. Thank you for your patience. I uh, want to welcome you to today's video, today's live stream. It's number five, lesson number five in this series of videos on how to play piano uh, for the beginner. And today it's going to be, I think this video for me, it's, it's one of the most important videos I could probably ever do. Uh, it's one of the most important things I've ever learned to do in my entire life. So it's really close to my heart. Uh, it's something that I'm really passionate about and that I'm proud to be able to, you know, teach my students. And, you know, in my opinion, in my experience, no one ever has been able to teach, you know, anyone this. And I've never, certainly never learned it anywhere. And that whole idea is on uh, how to practice. So today I'm going to teach you specifically how to practice. It's just like a really simple step-by-step -step, uh, thing on practicing. And once you, once you know this, you're just going to be able to use the same process with every single piece of music, every single song on piano, or just even with music. And this is not only just with music, but if you're just learning anything, this is a learning process that I'm trying to teach you over here. You're going to be able to do this with anything. Uh, okay, so just a little bit about my story with how I figured this stuff out. It's actually in the beginning, I, I didn't figure this stuff out. When I was in college, when I was doing my piano performance degree, it, it's, it was really frustrating. Like when I, when I was, you know, I, I really, when I decided to do my piano performance degree and I really went into it, you know, burning all the boats and there was, it was either sink or swim for me. It was like a matter of life and death. Um, I was practicing like six to eight hours a day. And what I noticed is that anytime you do that amount of practice on a daily basis, you're going to make improvement. I mean, it's impossible not to, right? But, you know, the thing that people didn't explain to me and the thing that I figured out the hard way and I'm hoping, you know, one of the reasons why I want to share this whole practicing thing is so you don't figure out the way I did because it's just massive trial and error. I was like groping around in the dark. Um, it was just like there, there was, there's a myth with practice. It's almost like when, you know, they, they say if you just show up and you work hard enough at it, if you practice hard enough at it, they believe that the results will follow. And that's just not true because the other half of the equation is you need to know how to practice. And a lot of times when you're learning from people or uh, people who are naturally talented at it, naturally talented at music, maybe not even naturally, but they just figure it out. Usually they're not able to teach you how they figured it out because it was just frustrating. Anytime I ever asked or tried to find out how do you practice? You know, even if I asked you, how do you practice? The answer I always got is just, you just do it. You just go home and do it. But it's just, I'm already doing it six to eight hours a day and I'm not making as many results as I should be. So that's something that really frustrated me because that's the only advice I ever got. And it's almost like um, if you think about the, the things they're supposed to teach you in school that they don't, things like, you know, studying effectively, things like, you know, let's say finances, right? You, you have to kind of learn this stuff on your own. It's frustrating, right? Because I, I remember going to school too. And, you know, I was a pretty good student, but you know, I just kind of figured it out on my own. I, I don't even really remember what process I used. It's just like I studied hard and I got the good grades and stuff like that. But what if you're studying hard and you don't get the good grades? You need someone to be able to teach you how to study effectively. And this is the same thing with practice. You need someone to teach you how to practice if, effectively. Remember in the last, the end of the last video, I said, it's not enough to practice hard, not enough to work hard. You need to also be able to practice smart. You need to be able to work the smart way too. Because no matter how hard you work, if you don't have an effective plan to go into it, you're gonna get nowhere. Um, so today, I'm gonna answer that question for you guys. I'm gonna share with you exactly what I teach to my students. Literally, this is how I teach it to my students. I'm gonna hopefully be able to do that for you guys here. And I'll give you a quick little live demo at the end. Um, basically, as if I was learning a piece here, okay? Or a song, um, coffee break. I love this mug. One of my uh, students got it for me. Can you see it right here? Yeah. Hey, Facebook. It's pretty cool. It's backwards, but. All right. Um, so, 
Let me share with you the exact formula on how to practice effectively, how to practice the right way. And it's a pretty simple formula. And it kind of has to be simple because if you know anything about who I teach, the majority of students that I've ever taught have been like six to nine years old. So if it's not simple, you're not gonna be able to figure it out on your own. So step number one, and this is basically just three steps. First step is to chunk it. As you figure out how much you're gonna practice. Second step is the repetition. Like, you know, it's kind of obvious practice is repeating, doing over and over. And the third step is to actually link those two chunks together, two sections in the end. So let's go uh, through that step by step. Number one, chunking. And you kind of hinted at it. You want to decide how much you want to practice in the beginning. You have to make that distinction. You have to divide it into sections. If you're not divided into sections, you're not practicing effectively. You're going to go nowhere. And the, uh, the, there's a quote from Henry Ford. I don't remember the exact quote, so I'm just going to paraphrase for you very loosely here. It's probably really inaccurate, but uh, anyway, don't fact check me on this. Uh, what he basically said was that any task that is very difficult becomes manageable as long as you divide it into a small enough chunk, a small enough section or whatever word he used. So as long as you make it small enough, it's, it's impossible not to get it done. And the example that I use with my students is I, I ask them, and it's a good way to think about it this way too. It, you know, think about how do you eat a pizza, right? And then hopefully the answer is not you shove the whole thing in your mouth unless you're like a competitive eater. Uh, I asked the students, how do you eat a pizza? And you have to divide it up, right? Well, you divide those into slices. And if you think of each song, each piece of music that you're working on as a musical pizza, you just divide it up into the proper slices, okay? So you divide it up and you've picked your first part. And what you want to do, this is super important. Don't forget this step, is that once you find your one first section that you're working on, then you, you, uh, you, you will practice into the first note of the next section, okay? So the first note of the next section, think of it as eating a whole slice of pizza and then taking the next bite. That would be rude in real life. I hope you don't do that, but this is just an example with piano here, okay? So you do that because if you don't, if you skip this step and you don't connect it to the next part, when you're putting the sections together, you're going to have to practice putting it together. If you just practice into the first section, into the first note of the next section, you can just skip the step and it'll be naturally connected. Um, okay, so for this reason, when you're going in small parts at a time, I highly suggest that if you're, you know, if you're a complete noob with this whole piano thing, make sure you start with, uh, with songs, right? Or start with music that you already know really well, okay? Because if you don't know the music, it's gonna be really hard for you to figure out what the sections are. And if you have a song, you have words, you're able to read the verses and divide it up that way. Super simple to figure it out that, that way, okay? And that's it for this one step. Next step is repetition. So once you figure out the chunk that you're gonna practice, the next step is to figure out how many times you're gonna practice it. Repeat it, and actually you might not even have a number, just make sure you repeat it a whole bunch of times. So this step, I think this main step right here is really going to determine your success with how well you, you progress because if you don't pay attention to this step, you're again, this is kind of the main glue that's gonna hold everything together. Now, the example I wanna give you is that if you think of a blacksmith, one of these people that make like swords and stuff like that too, and I'm talking about like, you know, antique blacksmith, I, whatever you call them, like say someone who's actually working on a sword. The story about blacksmiths is that it's, it's really, it's a lot of incredible, you know, concentration. They will literally take a sword and they'll hammer at it for about three hours straight, maybe not straight, maybe actually three hours straight, but let's say just say three hours total. They're just hitting the hammer with the same exact motion, the same exact movement, using the exact you know, right pressure that they need. It's an incredible amount of you know, concentration. So the point I'm getting at here is that any, you know, any small adjustment in the opposite direction and that whole thing will crack and they'll have to start over another three hours down the drain, right? So the important thing here is that quality is what's going to determine the amount of repetitions you need to do and actually whether you'll get anywhere. So ideally you want quality and quantity, but if I had to pick one, I would quick, I would probably, probably pick quality because it's almost like the same thing with someone who works hard versus someone who works smart. 
usually who will win. And I would usually put my money on the person who works smart. It's unfair, but that, that's how it is. So the way to tap into this type of quality to make sure you're doing the right quality amount of repetitions is to do and to use something that I use uh, for my students. And this is what is called the three times in a row rule. So basically whatever you're going for, you can try to do three times in a row. And whatever your standards are, they don't necessarily have to be super duper high or anything like that. You can just start really low. You can set the bar low. And in fact, I would recommend that. So let's just say you're just trying to get all the notes correct or play with the correct fingers. You would do that three times in a row. Once you do that three times in a row, then you can move on to the next chunk, okay? So uh, super, you know, just, this is kind of common sense, but you know, let's talk about this. If you get to the second or third try and you mess up, you gotta make sure to start over at zero. That way you think of it as a game. So it doesn't matter like how many times you actually do it, it matters how many times you actually do it the right way. So I would highly recommend using this three times in a row rule to make sure you get consistency and quality of results. Now, if you're a beginner, you might not even wanna do the three times in a row rule. And you know, this is based on my experience too, because some of the kids I have, they're, they're just not able to tap into that type of concentration right away. So for them, I just say, let's just try to get three good ones because you know, it, it, is, good, it, it is good to have proper you know, practice mechanics and all that stuff and make sure you're practicing the right way and getting results and all that. But to me as a teacher, and maybe to you in the beginning when you're starting out on your piano journey, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is your enjoyment. Make sure you're enjoying the practicing. And if this three times in a row rule thing is just sucking the enjoyment out of your practice, don't do it. You can come back to it later. So you might just focus on doing a bunch of repetitions, okay? Uh, until you get to the point where you know, your, your feet are wetter and you know, you're comfortable with it and you're able to move on to the three times in a row rule, okay? So set the, start, set the standards, set the bar really low when you're practicing in the beginning. Now, uh, after you do that, it's the, the next part is just simply to connect the two chunks together. And then after that, you just rinse and repeat the process. So the reason why you need to connect these chunks together is you think of a phone number. How many phone numbers or how many digits, how many numbers does a phone number actually have? And the correct answer is 10, all right? Uh, but I would think, and no, I, I know for sure, and when you're thinking about this, you don't think of one number at a time. You think of them in chunks, right? So what it is, it's, it, what is it? It's the area code, it's the next three numbers, then it's the last four numbers. You see how it just that gets divided up quite nicely and that's how the human brain processes things, okay? So if you think how we remember, again, it's in chunks, right? Another example is if you're thinking about reading, if you're reading pages, if you're reading a book, right? You don't think one letter at a time, you think words, right? And then not beyond words, you actually think sentences, sentences in a paragraph, and you think paragraphs within the book, right? And if you're like a ridiculous speed reader person, you're just reading the whole page, right? But you have to make sure that, you know, you, you connect these chunks together because that's what's going to enhance your concentration. And in the end, the whole goal is to be able to play the whole song from beginning to end, no matter what. Um, Right, and you know, it's, it's kind of funny because they have done studies where it's scientific, they prove that a person, your human brain, we can usually only keep seven things in your mind at the same time or remember seven things at a time. But the cool thing is the flip side of that, you can train yourself to remember more. Um, so you can literally go beyond seven to like a hundred to like even a thousand. And if you want to learn more about this, there's a book I would highly recommend you read if you're interested in learning about how memory works. It's called, it's called uh, Moonwalking with Einstein. I'm not going to spoil it for you here, but it's about a journalist who gets like the memory championship bug or whatever. He really gets into this whole idea of memory, like he researches it. He researches it so much, he actually wrote this book on it. So what he does, he documents his journey of being trained by one of the memory champions of the entire world. He actually goes on to compete in the world memory championships and they do crazy stuff like they memorize like 100, 200, 300 random numbers at one time. Just a random sequence of codes, right? So there's a way you can train yourself to do it. But again, the same thing with them. They start off small sections at a time. All right, um, now, uh, you, again, you just, you repeat this process with the next chunk. So if you have one chunk, you do the whole repetition, you do the next chunk, you do the whole repetition, right? You have two chunks, you put them together, right? 
So that one chunk becomes two. Let's say it's one measure and two measures, right? So it's two measures. Then you would look at the next measure, then the next measure, then you put those two together. So now you have, it's, I know this might be confusing. Now you have two measures and then another two measures. Then you put that section together and that's four measures. And if you're in the beginning, usually you won't be working on music that's more than eight measures. So that four measures is like half of the song, right? Then you look at the next measure, another measure that turns into two measures, one, one, two, 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 four. So you have four measures here, the first half, four measures here on the second half. Then you put it all together. You put all eight measures together in your song. I'm sorry if that's not clear. I don't know how else to, you know, maybe when I demo it at the end, it'll make more sense to you. Okay. But that's the clearest way that I can explain it. Um, now, if, Let's say you play the whole song from beginning to end and you're noticing cer certain parts, certain chunks. You're having, con sorry, <laughs> we're offline. We're back on. Huh. All right. That was weird. So think about each section that you're working on. Um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. Think about every section that you're working on as legs to a table. Okay, so if you think about a table, let's let's even just take a stool because that's three legs, one shorter than four. Anyway, so that's three legs, three legs to a stool. Let's say you have two really, really, really strong legs to that stool, but one really weak one. Are you going to sit on that? I'm not going to sit on that because you're going to land on your butt, right? Let's say you have two really, really strong legs and then you have one kind of average one. It's still kind of a kind of a risk to sit on that. Let's say you have three average legs you can sit on. It's still another risk. So you want to make sure each leg of the entire stool is completely strong when you sit down on it. So if you think about music the same way, you want each chunk to be as as a, as strong as a leg holding up a table. Okay. I hope that example helps. Now, uh, okay. I'll just give you a really short, small demonstration here. I'm trying to think of a good song. Let's go with uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, right? So if we're playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Now, as easy as that might look, it's actually really difficult for someone who is a complete beginner, right? So with that, we would chunk the sections, right? So one little part at a time. So here's the first part I would suggest that they play. That's literally it, right? And don't, you know, like if you're a little bit more advanced, don't judge. I'm like, <coughs> we have to start off at some point, right? So that's as much as they're able to do. Now, that's one part, that's one chunk. You wanna go to the next note, like we demonstrated. <coughs> Sorry about the dogs. Right, one note to the next chunk, right? Yeah, and you do that a whole bunch of times. Then you look at the next part. To the next part of the chunk. Right, do that again. Right, and then you put the first two chunks together. Then you carry on until you have the whole song, right? Uh, now, one of the good things is that music is really repetitive. So a lot of these sections are gonna repeat themselves. So you're gonna notice you don't really have to practice like four separate individual chunks. It's more like two or three. So that's the good thing is that you'll notice that they have these repetitions. Now, when you start to move further up the ladder in the piano journey, it gets a little bit more complicated. Um, you know, especially if you're working on more advanced intermediate music, because the music becomes more complex, the structure isn't necessarily as, as simple as some of these nursery rhymes, right? Um, for instance, let's take, all right, let's take something like Turkish March by uh, Mozart. So, how would you divide that, right? That might be a good exercise for you, okay? So think about that for a second. How would you divide that up? Now, that's some kind of advanced stuff, right? So, again, why we don't start with classical music either, because there's no words, you can't really think of the verses. So, if I were to start, literally, that's it. Then the next part. Where was I? And then from the beginning, right? And then the second part. And then that part together, then that's how you would build that up. But that's a little bit more difficult. You want to start with the easier music again, like I said, you want to start with songs until you get a really good feel for it. And then if you are, 
trying to do something to challenge yourself, you can move into more instrumental music, but the music's gonna get more complex, more complicated. Um, so don't, don't try to jump up in levels too high. Make sure you know what you're doing every step of the way at the level you're at, okay? Um, that's it for today's video. Um, next week, now if you made it this far, if you watch all five of these videos, it's my goal, it's my hope that when you finish this one, you have all the tools necessary to be able to play piano on your own. Um, it's always my suggestion to find a teacher because it's just way too hard for you to do it properly on your own, in my opinion, okay? And of course, this is kind of online as well. I don't teach students online, so I teach them one-on-one. -on -one. I'm not necessarily how good this will work for you, but if all goes according to plan, you have everything you need to be able to, you know, all the tools that you need to be able to play piano on your own. The next video, the next live stream, next week, I'm gonna wrap this all together. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit about the background of my videos, the science of the videos, why they work so well, my tutorials, okay? Uh, so I'll explain that in real super detail as much as possible. I'll, I'll even give you some tips on how to practice with them, okay? Some strategies and um, plans that you could use, okay? But basically that's it. If you have these first five videos and the next one where I explain my tutorials, you're gonna be able to do a lot on your own. Again, it's my recommendation to find a piano teacher, find a good piano teacher, a, a really qualified piano instructor. Try not to do it on your own, but if you wanna do it on your own, I'm pretty confident you have everything that All right, we're back. This probably looks really awkward on Facebook. Um, all right, well, we're back. That's the end of this video. <laughs> it's a really good way to end this. Uh, if you liked this video, I want to thank you for sincerely watching. If you got anything out of it, please like, please share, please subscribe. Hope to see you guys next time. Happy practicing.